Hello, you're listening to Talking Out of Slot, the Slot Card Podcast. This week, slightly unexpectedly, because I'm just off a plane back from America, we're going to be doing an episode where we're going to be talking about what caught our eye, what are the favourite runners and riders in the hotly contested Slot Card of the Year awards, as we're halfway through the year, and I'll be trying to talk knowledgeably and enthusiastically about the cars I've been having fun in the garage with. Pedro, what are you going to be talking about? I will just be responding to you, I suspect. I was expecting a nicer intro. I was expecting, and here's my erstwhile stalwart, Steve Steve McQueen, looky-likey, partner in crime. Okay, I'll do it again. Hello, no, 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 I'm Scott. Just... <laughs> Here, here's, here's my erstwhile partner in crime, Steve, Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen, looky likey. Can I have less of a tongue twister? It's. <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> I've got yeah. a few things that have caught my eye. So, uh... Oh, go on. Why, why don't you start with that then? Oh, because I thought you'd go first and um, because I haven't completely ready. So what has caught my eye? I'm I'm on the wrong part of the show. It's um, like we haven't been away and we haven't been. It's only 10 days since we did this last and already it feels like, you know, we're we're starting day one again. Um, uh, I can't do that one because I swore too much in my description. (laughs) (laughs) There's a this week's competition is which car was Pedro talking about when he saw too much? (laughs) Which Instagram posts absolutely about slot cars absolutely triggered Pedro? Well, I put something about what the actual Hmm. music that accompanied this particular post. Did you see (laughs) that? Um, we're going back a bit here because we have been away, dear listener, because someone went on his holly bobs. Um, did you see Revo Slot are doing the C5? Yes, I did. Um, now I posted on Slot Forum. Other slot forums are available. Other, yeah, other <laughs> slot forums, but they're not called slotforum.com. Um, I postulated wildly that there, there's some kind of. Have you seen a Marcos, a Fly one, next to a Revo one? They're like they came out of the same mold. They're almost indistinguishable. Then suddenly turning around and doing a C5, I thought, hang on, didn't Fly do a C5? Because it's an odd one to go back to, I thought. Well, uh, I've, I think I've mentioned this before. Revo slot bodies are a bit odd. So the 911 is clearly a kind of, let's call it homage uh, to the old pro slot car because the windscreen pillar length of the nose thing is all wrong in the same way. Uh, and then, as you say, the Marcos looks... I mean, if you're making a model of the same car, you would think it would look the same anyway, so that's possible. Exactly, yeah. But it's when there's kind, there's just something about it is a little bit too similar, isn't it? Mm. But then things like the Supra and the Toyota GT1 were nice, and they were, as far as I know, new moulds. Uh, and then we've seen things like the Opal and a couple of the others which have been slightly odd as well. So, I, uh, dear Revo Slot, dear BRM, if you're listening, well done, because we're speaking... Uh, English and I think you're Italian. Um, let us know who. What's the what's the logic behind the bodies? Is it uh, do, have you bought the rights to some old molds? Uh, is the you know the statute of limitations up on some of these things or what? Um, but yes, having said that, your original question is it an odd thing to go back to? I mean, it's a money spinner, isn't it? It's, it's a guaranteed. Uh, I also postulated that uh, dear Dave Kennedy would call it. I think awesome, but he uh, actually called it fantastic twice. Um, I think it's a, a guaranteed money spinner, even if you start sticking stupid libraries on it, uh, like Repsol or is it? No, oh, they do Martini, don't they? Reva Slot do Martini. But there's quite a few genuine ones, and I guess the North American sales will just be through the roof. Mm, maybe, yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm. I, I, I... I sort of like Corvettes, but I've got some fly ones, and I've done, but I, I can't see myself buying any more. Uh, well, I had a fly C5 because it fitted the uh, the first rule of Pedro's buying of slot cars, which is buy cars that you have seen run. And so uh, I did see that run in 99, maybe 2000, maybe 2001, not sure. Um, a long time ago. So, some of, some of our ago. listeners won't be that old, you know that, don't you? That's quite scary. Um, yeah, so I, I might be tempted, but I think feel i kind of scratch that itch so but they'll, they'll sell them in the states won't they well and the other problem with revo slot for me uh, is of course the mysterious lap counter triggering halfway around the lap phenomenon that only happens with revo slot cars 
The phenomenon. Um, so phenomenon. just to just to remind her, I've got a Carrera bridge lap timer thing, which is optical, which senses the car passing underneath it. Uh, and every other car works fine. And a Revo slot, it'll trigger four or five times going around the lap. <laughs> I have no, no, the physics of why that's happened it completely defeats me, but it always happens with a Revo slot car. So I'm hmm. guessing it's got something to do with a metal chassis, but as I see, the physics of why is, is beyond me. It's so beyond you, me. It's beyond me too. Um, okay, well, I think I've, the only thing that really caught my eye, because I was, as you see, on holiday, uh, well, it wasn't really. I was visiting family. The family just happens to live in North America, so so you have to. Did get you one play. did you pop pop in on the two um, the two Americans that listen to this? Sadly, no. I don't know. I mean, it's. I don't know if you've mm. ever been to America, but it's quite a big place. Is it? <laughs> Is it? But, well, it's also very confusing because my uh-huh. sister, because uh, for British listeners, this, my sister lives in Londonderry, which we all know is in uh, Northern Ireland, and it's right next to Manchester, which we all know is in Northern England, and uh, <laughs> I think as you know, just along from Northampton, which is in the middle of England. Anyway, the, all the place names are very familiar, but they're all in the wrong places, and they're all the wrong size, so, <laughs> the, so it's, that's quite confusing. But... Um, do the people in Many, Manchester have the swagger? All right, and the, uh, the whole Manchester. All right, Manchester. Do they, they, do well, they, they talk with the Boston accent sort of thing. So rather oh, than oh, I can't do that one. Boston, Boston. Um, the it's an hour north of Boston, which is why the um, ten, maybe more, maybe like twenty years ago, uh, when I was visiting before, I stumbled across a slot car track uh, in. They were mentioned Manchester, but it was a sort of thingy uh, track, and there was a guy was rented out by the half hour or whatever. Um, I, but he let me have a blast round with us. One of the few times I drove a thingy, uh, but I don't think that's even in operation anymore. I did have a quick Google slot car stores. I learned to translate English when I'm over there. Slot car stores near me, and all it came up with was a few kind of toy. Uh, shops that were selling a bit of Carrera Go, so you know, tish, 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 not real stock cars, not real. Stock cars. No. No. But what caught my eye, even from way over there, um, were the pictures and the discussion. Let's call it that. Let's call it a discussion about the new Skeletric Cobras with the very small driver and the very tall windscreen. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Uh, I don't know my Cobras well enough, but it doesn't look quite right to me. Uh, and I think there's some, dis- some some other discussion has said it's possibly not the case. However, having said all of that, the ones with the hard top on... Bill Shepard. Very, uh, is that who that is, is it? That's okay, the it looks, green one, yeah. Looks very sexy. Uh, it does, and, doesn't it? Yeah, and uh, the proportions of driver to windscreen... Seems to be less <laughs> less crucial because it's got. Has a roof. he got? A, has he got a cushion to sit on as well? Because the open top on. Targa Florio one, he definitely looks like they were stripping weight he's and did away with sl- the seat. May, maybe it was an aerodynamic thing. Maybe he was sort of slunking down in the cockpit, so they got a uh-huh. little few bit more RPM down the streets. Or it could Compens- be they've to com- modeled- compensate for the barn door with <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they've modelled it as it would look under heavy braking. In that has kind of the massive forces have stretched the windscreen and pushed the driver into the uh, into the footwell. So he <laughs> shrunk down and the windscreen has extended. It does look wrong and it's very disappointing that one I have to say. But then, as my disappointment was reaching new levels, um, uh, that Sean Pendle put up a picture of the Bill Shepherd one. And I thought, well, that's quite that is quite mm, nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was yeah, that was kind of the only thing that's really caught my eye. So back to you. Ah, uh, we're playing table tennis, uh, sort of, sort of. Plus, that, it gives me a chance to have a small micro dose. <laughs> <laughs> I have been up for thirty six hours or something. You know, I said I noticed this because I'm um, petty minded like this. Uh, when I said the C five will sell well in North America. The, uh, I noticed, couldn't help but notice the Thunderslot Shadow DN4, which was slated by um, that young Mr. Kennedy as being Car of the Year, 
hasn't sold out. The restock has not sold out. And I think it's not sold out globally because Sean still has them. And the American Sean, um, whose name I've forgotten, but he trades with Electric Dreams. Marco. Marco. Um, they've still got them. Although their website still has this little thing saying um, a purchaser is limited to three units, which I thought was amusing. As in, as in the capitalists in America, I guess, were trying to um, scoop them up and stick them on the Bay of E to flog oh, them a profit. Some but, speculation been going on. Yeah, oh. but they haven't sold out. And I just wondered, was it just too niche? I mean, they only made 1,900 of them, he said, tentatively thinking he might have that wrong. They only made a short, small number, and the first lot went, and I think the first lot was the market. The rest are sitting gathering dust, which doesn't surprise me because it's a weird little car. It's a very nice model, but a weird looking car. And I don't want one. It uh, well, <laughs> well uh, the volume of, yeah, this is a, this an old topic of debate, isn't it? So the old days when, you know, a slot car manufacturer would make 5,000, 10,000. Did they ever? Did they ever uh, make 10,000 or something? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, even some of those Skeletric Classic gift sets are sort of 10,000, or certainly a lot of them were 5,000, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, uh, and I think, again, not giving tittle tallying away, so uh, someone I know who imports uh, one of the, the smaller brands uh, in the past said, you know, he was a minimum order of 5,000 and they were sold out within hmm. days. Um it's a different world now, I think, because there's no big toy shops taking them. There's no sort of high street. I'm guessing the kind of Toys R Us type scenario doesn't exist. So um, the volumes which are getting produced are much lower. Um, but then they've got to try and juggle the make a minimum number in order to make it worth doing. And I think that car was always going to be a challenge because I'm no shadow expert, but there's going to be a series of cars which are all black with a number <laughs> on them, I would think. I no, I think there was one so in red. It's, uh, oh, I just made that up. I think there was one in red. Oh, well, you, you may... Well, I'm getting fancy livery. Uh, which, talking about, you know, sweating the mould, hats off to Skeletric for bringing out yet another six-wheel tiddle, um with uh, an earbox, uh, the sort of funny, big, chunky, wrap-round earbox which I must confess I thought was only on the car at the presentation. I don't think it ever raced, but they've got they've got it listed as having been at Spanish Grand Prix. Um, so for you know that's a car which kind of existed in two two years for one team, uh, so possibly two liveries. But I think they've done quite well stretching that one. Um, uh, so I'll go back to why you, why you. I know you've you've kind of kept an eye on Shadow Stock, haven't you? Stock Watch, well, only because people. I think um, I want to counter anyone who says Car of the Year, but I don't know what exactly what the because um, I don't like people just declaring Car of the Year and then changing their minds. No names, no pack drill. Um, was you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know what? I'm going to be totally upfront and clear you of all responsibility. That was me. I I done that. <laughs> <laughs> Which one did I clear, declare first? The cat. Was it the cat? Uh, Caterpillar Scalotto NSX, which has come into my finally come into my possession, and I do love it to bits. Although I have issues with it, but I do love it to bits. So that was clearly going to be car of the year because uh, I'd completely forgotten about the Bastos Rover. And the Bastos then, Rover. In almost the next post, um, Sideways Hurricane. Direction Racing, oh, car of the year. Get in there, uh, as they say. Okay, I think, I mean, since we've drifted into what, so you're halfway through the year, what do we think? That if, if there was a leaderboard, if there was a kind of favourites, if it was a US election that went on forever, then, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, I think the runners and riders have got to be, in no particular order, the MR slot car shadow. Mm -hmm. um, depending on whether it's got to be a new mould or re-liveries, the, the Penske Ferrari from Slotted, that seemed to be very popular. Do you mean the 512, uh, the Sunoco? The 512, the Sunoco one, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I haven't got one, I think, but I mean, well, I've got one, I've got a Bastos Rover, sorry, but I haven't got, um, there's a number of Skeletric cars which have to, yet to come, so the Land Rover, I think, will, mm. in a way, be a slightly left field, Field, mm -hmm. get it off road. Yeah. Um, choice. <laughs> did you do that deliberately? I did. Were you I did. That in? 
Uh, well, it seemed clever to me, but I am very tired. Um, and sometimes and... I accuse you of not being professional, and then you just do that kind of thing. Bang. Wow. <laughs> not worthy. Uh, so I, I, well, I would say it's too early to call, but oh, my own... Don't let that stop you. ...choice, my, my leader at the minute, uh, as we go past the halfway mark, uh, for largely emotional reasons, but I will justify it on other grounds, is this electric Bastos Rover. Mm. Is that because you knew the driver and chatted with him? Yeah, and I got 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 ridden in one, and I had a Rover <gasps> and all. There's a whole myriad of reasons why, but I still think it's a nice model and it goes well. Uh, and it's kind of yeah, that's good. It's not it's not a sp- Speed crease mode on is that what you refer to these things? As? It's, a, <laughs> you know, it's a good, it's a good model toy car sort of thing. If I was to, if you were to, I mean, if you were to, things that push the boundary, then I think I, I suspect by the end of the year, I'll probably be voting for the Land Rover because I think it's, I think it's, it, as I said, it's a left field, it's an interesting, different choice, which will probably sell out. Time and time again. So, but I will but will electric dreams restrict you to only three units per purchase? Well, mm, the it wait, might see. not it might not sell well in the US of E because I'm not sure how familiar they are. It's not quite the icon that it is. Uh, I'm sure if the they UK. just scratch out the bit that says Land Rover and put I don't know what was it Cherokee Jeep Cherokee put Jeep on it. There you go. There put go. Jeep. <gasps> wow. I was having just I've been in. Uh, did I say I've been in the US? I've been in no. the US, and uh, oh. my my nephew's high school graduation, and he has a very bright green Jeep, which uh, has instead of Jeep on the side of it, it says Greep because it's green, and I quite like <laughs> it. the Greep. Uh, it's huge, but anyway, uh, enough of my, enough of my non holiday. Um, so, what, what's your if you had if you were if you were put, putting money on a car of the year so far? What would it be? I've, I'm going to so far. I'm going to say the Bastos Rover. Oh, it, it would it would without any shadow. I'll see what I did there. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> anything you uh, could do, I could do better. No shadow of a doubt, it would uh-huh. be um, the. Um, the the one I like the most. Uh, that would be the one. <laughs> I would be hard pushed uh, with with the current offerings. I do really quite like the Direction Racing Huracan. Um, the ma- that the fact that they managed to get it out before me is slightly annoying. I put a picture. Did I put that on the socials? I don't think I did actually. I'll I'll maybe do that. Um, they got the colours right. I got the colours wrong. And I looked at it, I put them side by side, and I thought, oh, do I just strip this down again and and start all over again? Or do I just bite the bullet and just get another set of decals, slap them on and walk away, which is what I'm currently planning to do. Um, but I do like that one. I think it's a very pretty library. It's a very nice little car, and I'm very happy with it. Um, Bastos Rover of is got to be up there. Land Rover when it appears. Fab One when that appears. Again, oh, the right. left field. Um, I was Very. trying to make a pulling the strings joke there, but it won't work. It just won't work. <laughs> uh, and a lot of people might not know that uh, Thunderbirds was puppets anyway. Um, but I also really like, and I, I think it was this year, the C Class from Slotter. Certainly in the Pro Mark delivery. That this is a it... peachy, peachy thing. And you know what we haven't even mentioned yet? And people are probably writing oh, angry emails as we think. The Maserati from Paul Ricard. No. It's not out yet, but it will be. <laughs> you hope. That, that's not yet. Um, no, the, the the F1 Ferrari from Polycar. Um, you know, the, the red one, 1982. You mean the one I raced at uh, Gain? Did you? Yeah, no, 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 that was a 70s one. The 1982, Gilles Villeneuve, oh, Denis Peroni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. See, interesting, yeah. that, interesting that that slipped We had completely attention. missed that. Mm. Is that because neither of us have made the purchase there? Possibly, maybe it'd be myopic. Also, mm. um, yeah, I don't know, maybe we'll see. I think it's uh, under hotly anticipated. That's definitely got to be one of those. Anyway, we'll see. 
let's we'll, in six months' time we'll make our mind up and and curb the wrath of slot car makers and fans across the globe. They'll cut us out, won't they? They'll cut us out. Cut out, yeah. The advertising is really going to dry up. <laughs> what? Uh, what well, doesn't matter, so, Scott, because we've got the merch sales too. The like. merch, the merch yeah. is good. The merch, the. <laughs> um, but I think what it does mean that clearly the choices are so broad and wide that we're going to have to go in, in true car award styley. We're going to have to take ourselves away to some five star hotel with every car that's under consideration and spend at least a weekend evaluating and arguing before we get to the list and then making an announce making an announcement at some swanky dinner or other. And thank God that the merch sales will will do that, cover that. Otherwise, we could be looking stupid when it comes to the uh, checking out process. <laughs> There's so much a swanky dinner as bring your own picnic. <laughs> as long as there's cheese balls, I'm happy. I like a cheese ball. Cheese ball or cheese board or both? You like a cheese oh, ball no, or no, your cheese board? I, no, a uh, cheese boards bore me. I just don't get it. Ugh, some horrible cheese cheeses boards. on a cheese board. Yeah, but a cheese ball... What is it? It's reconstituted starch scraped out of the tanks when they've made a few bags of crisps and then they blast air through it and then they cover it in fake cheese and there's your cheese ball and I'm happy as Larry. But the but the well known saying is I like a cheese board. It's not a cheese ball. It's a no, cheese my board. my even more well known saying is I like a cheese ball. <laughs> I like three D printing. All and I like these a cheese ball. All these months, I've thought you were saying board, not ball. Oh, really? <laughs> no, it's cheese ball. <laughs> there was someone on the telly box who said something. It was, it's a line I've stolen. I like a cheese ball. The bo- board, cheese board. I like no, a cheese board. I like cheese I'm board. sure it's cheese. Anyway, I'm looking at it. we're going off topic. <laughs> I like a cheese Unlike board. Us. I like a cheese board uh, with a bit of celery and all that sort of stuff. Oh God, no, man! And Have some gra- self-respect and grapes. No, see, that's what I don't get. That's so like seventeenth century to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, um, and your and your problem with that is <laughs> forsooth. Anyway, moving seamlessly, I think you like to see seamlessly onto another thing. Many people don't get, which is uh, the joy, uh, indeed pleasure and happiness and satisfaction and contentment that I derive from digging out old slot cars and running them <laughs> round my track. Is this going to be um, a new feature at what, the, <laughs> what Scott's the, dug out of his plastic bags? Yes, bag. yes. I've been meaning it to be. It's got to be a thing. Scott, what Scott's dug out? Um, <laughs> anyway, this week, or, well, technically last week, before I went to America, um, I dug out uh, some old Ninko DTMs, so the Alpha, the Merc, Calibra, um, and in the same crate were some SCX touring cars and some fly touring cars, so the BMW, the Alphas, um, the old SCX BMW. Uh, Hang on, I'm also, stop you there. The Alpha yeah. uh, 156. Uh, yes, yeah, something something like that, and also the 147. Uh, same oh, yeah. chassis, even though it should have been a front... Well, they, should, they both should have been front-wheel drive cars, but... Um, no, and you no, know, uh, we're not getting away with that. I'm, I will swear to the gods that my 156 was front wheel drive and that was the source of disappointment Were am i wrong in no the mo- no no the motor was mounted right by the 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 guide but it was driving the rear wheels front wheel drive i'm with you and i now i understand what front wheel drive means uh, apologies well no the real cars were front wheel drive yeah, and so, yeah, yeah and because okay, of yeah, yeah so anyway. Yeah, yeah, uh, anyway going over that. Oh. but the great thing was so i mean those dinkos must be 20 years old because they were the original cardboard box dinkos uh the calibra is slightly later because it was in a, a plastic case um and the fly cars are not quite as old but nearly but the scx m3 is mm, 25 30 years old maybe um and they all run, the tyres are all round, and the tyres still grip, and I run. I had to turn the voltage up because, you know, they're a little bit, um, those motors need a bit more than 9 volts. Um, but, you know, straight out of the box, great. I'm happily tanking round. Not the, there's not got the finesse and the detail of modern cars. Well, the fly cars have, but the SCX and Inco don't. Um, but just great fun, absolutely great fun. And, and 
you happily just lap after lap, um, put another one on, lap after lap, um, a little bit of oiling here or there, just to kind of because they've been the old joints were creaking because they'd been in a box for twenty years. Um, but the most remarkable, well, most not the most remarkable thing, but a remarkable thing was the original tyres still soft, still grippy, not turned into mush or concrete. Um, and this is kind of one of my perennial questions about modern slot cars. There's somewhere along the line, the guys have chased, changed the formula, haven't they? They've taken something out or added something in. I don't know what. Probably because it kills hippopotamuses in the Serengeti or something. But um, the old tyres just worked and they lasted. And can we have more of those, please? <laughs> So while you were um, soliloquising your ode to Ninko, um, I... well, it's, a brand, it's a brand we don't talk about much because they're not making it's any gone. Cars, but that's why. By, <laughs> but by well, but you know, nothing's really gone. It's all on eBay. You know, it's all that swap meets. Yeah, geez, and, I thought you were going to get very existential on me there. Like, nothing's, well, ever yeah, gone, nothing, nothing's ever gone, Pedro. Nothing's ever gone. We're all but, just stardust um, and cheese balls. But. <laughs> <laughs> But great cars, great models, run perfectly out of the box. You know, buy two or three of them, you've got an instant class for a club. Uh, you know, a lot to be See, said for it. I know you're waxing lyrical and really blown away by your Linko DTMs. But I have just realised, if we are stardust, then cheese balls are stardust. Now that blows my mind however getting back on track <laughs> ninko i just i just googled ninko and they are um they so were set just, up when i'm just making I'm, I'm just making a note that, that you know i'm going to make my fortune by rebranding cheese balls as stardust, stardust balls <laughs> and uh selling um, them to gullible people called people come on pop yes. quiz, pop quiz. <laughs> when do you well, pop think quiz, yeah, yeah. ninko first established themselves Ooh. Gonna have to rush your corner. I I got my first Ninko car in nineteen ninety five, so I'm gonna say nineteen ninety four. Well, you were one year out, as uh, that man on the road uh, likes to say. One year out, nineteen ninety three, and That's... the first car was the Clio. Yeah, I believe it was, which I yeah. used to have in a little anniversary box with a book, and I sold it on eBay. Um. I what was I going to say? I'd see, I've got lost the train. The Ninko oh, GTS. So yeah. is four, 30 years ago then. Whoa, man! Does this year anniversary on an anniversary? The Ninko anniversary. We should have. Yeah. We should that get the merch team get some Ninko anniversary t-shirts made. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were much loved, weren't they? And um, unfortunately, I, re- I think the the lads who set it up sold out, and the basically to a toy company who were more interested in. Cheap and nasty making money. controls. <laughs> yeah, making, making money. money. Um, um, I think for those who weren't around at the time, and there are people younger than us, uh, although you don't see them at swap meets, the um, <laughs> the <laughs> it was a bit of a revelation. I mean, you know, the kind yeah. of skelet- the skeletric car of its day was you know, okay, but you know, it was kind of a loose interpretation of the shape, and um, well, a Ninko car was pretty accurate and. Uh, Straight axles, round wheels, mm-hmm. all that good stuff. You know, it stayed in the slot. Um, you know, by today's standards, them. But you know, but as I say, I can, huge amounts of fun. See, I think it's a little bit like people. Historic motorsport has grown in popularity, isn't it? So you get Goodwood and Classic Le Mans and all this sort of things. Crowds. Not only are people restoring these cars and enjoying racing them, but crowds of people pay to go and watch them. Well, it's kind of the same with slot cars. I'll just get my old Ninkos out and have my own little festival of speed revival. <laughs> call, call it what you like. Uh, on a, a sort of vaguely related, I did a little bit of work on my track um, last <gasps> night, so I might soon be able to get my Ninkos. Because I have, there's a few cars that are in boxes that I will never put on the Bay of E, and my DTM Ninkos are. Um, first and foremost in that group i'm trying to think of other ninkos that i might still have i've probably got oh yeah go mm. i've McLaren. got we've got a wealth of mclarens and they're not hidden yeah. away they're on a shelf all to themselves i think uh-huh. about 14 of those buggers um wow sweetly pretty yeah i think so um 
really like those. But yes, I did a bit of back and decorating yesterday. I may or may not have black and decked into a screw and knackered my drill bit. That might have happened. So at the when moment, you see, <laughs> at the moment, you work is black somewhat. and decorating. What were you trying to make? You're not using well, the black. And, are you hand writing with a black and decorating? <laughs> 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 it's going to be a very Skid erratic line. <laughs> skidding across bits of plywood. Uh, well, <laughs> no, mate. I'm doing this seriously. I'm doing this technically. I'm doing this professionally. I have, I've got, well, at the moment, no, I've no, got... No, no one's paying you to do it, but anyway. <laughs> That's a very good point. Well done. I'm with you on that. Although, I'm definitely I hope you're, Although, I think I the hope definition filming, moved. I hope you've been filming it for a series of Pedro Makes Slot Car Track videos. Um, I would say it's a good job I haven't been filming it so because otherwise <laughs> there would be footage of me wondering why my drill wasn't going through this piece of wood and then discovering a screw <laughs> that I was trying to black and decker okay. into. Um, I'm so, going to have three baseboards oh. uh, and they will bolt together. And so I was, cut, uh, was cutting, no, I was drilling holes for my dowels to go in so that the boards will Dowling. locate. Yeah, wow. they, they'll be doweled together like uh -huh. uh, male, female, Dowel and L, and then bolted together with these little adjustable clampy things. Um, so well, I'm this making very progress. professional. It does, isn't it? I mean, I don't I, make a living doing it. Give, <laughs> not yet. Given, uh, I mean, you know, slot mods started somewhere. I'm just saying. Yeah, the, but I bet um, they never black and decked into screws, did they? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, drill bits. possibly not. The um, I loathe to ask this because I know an artist such as yourselves, you know, doesn't 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 do things by a timetable. And I can't we, be we pigeonholed. All, so we, only have, we only have we only have to look that. at your white your white kit building to notice that. But How is many there white any kits do you think I bought last week? Oh no, I don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to safely say it's more than you finished. So I mean, you know, the, the net number of yeah, white yeah, kits yeah. has increased. But anyway, going back to the track, uh, <laughs> because I, is there even in the best for oh, Mrs. That's going to be longer than you think, kind of builder thing. <laughs> what um, what's your estimate when you're going to have it ready, finished? Oh, in, I, saw, I thought you were saying going round. I thought you say for Mrs. How long's your straight? Because size is all important. <laughs> um, how long till it's finished? I wouldn't like to say. Um, I mean, are we, is weather a factor? I mean, I don't know. You have to you have to do certain things before the winter closes in because we are halfway through the year. Technically, oh, no, 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 no. That was so sad to pick up on that news yesterday. Yesterday had lots of bad news: submarines, and actually, was it yesterday? And the summer solstice. So now the nights are drawing in. That's sad. Nights are drawing in. Anyway, you're racing the weather now. Mm, anyway, okay. so I, because I, I'd like you know, I will, I'll invest. I'll, I will, I'll, I'll divert hard hard saved cash from buying more from Pendle to put petrol in my tank and come and visit and drive on your new I mean we need a launch party. These are uh, ribbon cutting. Twenty fifty in that case if you're coming Twenty fifty, thank you very much. <laughs> I reckon I mean, so I mean I, I might bring with me a little one thirty second celebrity to cut the ribbon. In fact, <laughs> what with his fingers? Fact, with his little fingers, yeah. Uh, fingers. we could we could get uh, Dave Slaughter's thumbs up man to come and give oh, the track yeah. a thumbs up. You see, <laughs> I do Hi, like Dave, Dave Slaughter. Hello. Yeah, I do. Hello, Dave. Uh, that's Dave, not, get, that's not get, a thing. You send, can't say hello to people on podcasts when they're not there. Except now, now I have an image of him in his shed listening to steady, us jabber on, steady, and we say steady. we say hello, Dave, and he just raises his coffee mug and goes hello, boys, and um, continues on. Probably worry that we don't um, really listen and might show up. <laughs> I, <laughs> I am definitely, definitely going to try and finish it within the next couple of months because <gasps> I've got I've got ambitions, foolish ambitions possibly. I believe I'm going to try and solder each and every join of the track. <gasps> Why? For electrical continuity, mate. What track are you using? Ninko. Do you know they were established in 1993? I heard recently that's the case. Yeah. What um, Ninko's not particularly bad, but you could always do the copper tape over the joints thing. No, because that's just... rubbish. It's a lot easier than trying to solder every joint. But does it last? 
Does it matter? I mean, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> can I ask you another question <laughs> that you can answer? Well, with another question. It's sort of, it's sort of. If you're, are you absolutely fixed on the layer? You're not going to see. You might drive it and go. Mm, I want to just change that corner. No, or I might want okay, to just make that so street a little bit shorter. Or part of the production delays are going to be in once the boards are ready. I do intend to um, not fully commit, unlike me, um, too soon. And have a little practice. The only trouble is because it's so tight and twisty, tight and twisty, tight um, and twisty. Oh, it's going to be tight, tight and twisty. Tight, twisty. Oh, tight, she's going to be a tight and twisty one. More uh, a twisty here's Pete, and that, now over to Peter at the tight and twisty. <laughs> <laughs> the tight. I think we just named it the tight and twisty. The, the tight and twisty. Um, um, is that that's not an Oxford accent, is it? What am I doing? Scotsman Miller's accent. So anyway, hmm. boss. I think I was doing more Worsley Somerset. That's what I was doing. Anyway, I'm part. Of, I want to run it a bit, but it will need borders, and I will have to fashion borders out of cork tiles. Everything which, borders. Yeah. You know what it's like: bringing up children, running governments. Everything needs borders, <laughs> boundaries. Anyway, yeah. That's, that's Do border. governments use cork tiles for their borders? If only. Is that the Maybe mistake the try. Ukrainians made? They didn't have enough cork tiles stacked no. up on the border. Yeah, I pass. I, at this point, I think I should point out to to listeners who I hope enjoy our title music that you will be playing and editing in after we've finished all this. Shall I uh, hum the tune so people remember? Remind. Go on, go on. Give us a bit. Give us a, give us a bit of the tune. Go on. Uh, uh, uh. That's about all I can do. Anyway, it was written by a Ukrainian. <laughs> was it really? Oh. Yes. Hey. Uh, it's called Catch It. Oh, we should pay something rather than it is royalty free, isn't it? It is royalty. <laughs> I hope. Pay something. Pay something. <laughs> <laughs> well, just just you're siphon really, off a bit as, of the merch as, sales. Well, 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 he, listen, as it stands, I'd happily give him fifty percent of the merch sale profit. Whoa! I don't think I'd go yeah. that far. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, no. So the music is written by Ukrainian, which I quite like. Uh, well, I quite like the music. What as the well. music or the fact? Uh, yeah, I like both. Um, yeah. Anywho, so you said something earlier, and I was going to link into it by saying something else, and I'll say that now without the actual link. So we did uh, at Oxford. We did two new classes in the last two meetings. We ran the monopostos for the first time, and we ran sideways GT threes for the first time. And how is, did that go down? Um. The monopostos, let's not you're quite, lie. You're quite, you're quite a traditional club, aren't you? Sort of, you know, you're not, you're not, do not change agile. <laughs> Would it be fair to say? Well, um, <laughs> don't know how to take that, Scott. <laughs> you're basically okay. saying we're stuck in the past. Or just old men, basically. Yeah. But mm. anyway, let me know. So the monopostos, and you, by which you mean the polycar modern Formula One car. Yeah, I'm not really sure I want to share this information with you anymore. Go on. Okay. The monopostos, um, it was a mixed mixed reception, I think, judging by the WhatsApp group the next day. Um, mm. Several people not being fans of the way that they fall apart. Uh, somebody else pointing out that they are designed to fall apart and not break um a wings come off front and rear um is that they're held on mag magnets something no as as they come they're not held on at all so you get this little clip thing that you fit in or you go and buy some magnets i have bought magnets for mine and i'm for the front wing versus and i um have also um, I took it into the Oxford Centre for Technical Excellence and Technical Speed, <laughs> and I drilled out the, for want of a better word, nipples <laughs> that uh, are on the wing and put in a bit of dowel, tiny plastic dowel to kind of magnets and dowels hold my front wing in place. And mine stayed put. Um, but then, uh, yeah, it did. No, mine stayed put the whole um the whole evening. I thought they went quite well. They were very different. They aren't as fast as other things. Unfortunately, we'd back to back them with Polycar F1 Classic stylies, and those are little rocket ships. And um, it was an interesting, and I thought quite accurate um, kind of comment on F1 in that F1 cars are now mahusive 
uh, although they're still quite fast, but these, uh, the monopostos were mahusive compared to the classics and not quite as nippy. They didn't, they felt sluggish, which is fine. But. That's it. I, now I'm genuinely, so I would have thought their length and width and general low ground hugginess would have lent them uh, some speed, but as, as you're, is your track quite twisty then? Is it is it more more no. Monaco than Monza? Is it or what? Was it? Oh, it's definitely not Monza. Um, what is it? Mm, it's more Brands Hatchy. No, because oh. uh, that straight is straight. I don't know. They they're not that much heavier. The wheels there's, there's more gearing I think in the rear wheels in that they're taller slightly, so they probably take a little bit more oomph to get going. Um, but that should result in more terminal velocity. Um, I don't know. They they were they geared the same as the F1 classics, I believe, but they just felt slower, and they were definitely more tail happy, um, which caused some incidents. Um, but I enjoyed do running you, them definitely. Do you think it'll be interesting? But do you think this is because people this is first time people have raced them, so getting to know them and getting you know, they were they yeah. were. Maybe they'll get faster and a bit more agile as people become more familiar with them. I think there's a degree of that. There's a. Um, I have to be careful what I say because uh, people might be listening in. I think you're safe there. Good point, well made. Um, I think there's a degree of that. There is a degree of um, luditism, possibly. <gasps> you, do you want to ex- do you want to explain that to our overseas listeners? No. Okay. Well, the Luddites were a group of people who went around in 18th, 19th century, 19th century England, and they burnt down mills that were trying to, you know, uh, industrialise things. They smashed up early industrial equipment because they could yeah. see it was taking away jobs. the jobs. Little did they know about chat GPT. Chat ATP or whatever Q it's called. Plus, yeah. whatever it is. It's yeah. all, you see, not, there's nothing new in the world. It's all just no. history repeating. The um, Q, Shirley Bassey. Ah, that was in my head as soon as you said it. That was very there good. You go. yeah, yeah. So, and we don't get we don't get hit with copyright. So as long as everybody has got that song in their head, okay, it, everybody, hum along. Everybody. Um, the two Americans, the imaginary Canadian, the Frenchman, the <laughs> or the other peeps, the Danish guy, whatever. Uh, the the don't side, forget the Sultan, the Sultan of Brunei. Oh, Sultan of Brunei. Sorry, Your Lordship, Highness, Majesty, whatever. Um, the Huracan, the sideways. I ran my Huracan. I also ran my, Hur- my Lexus Hur- Huracan, and Hur- they were they were just as good as you expect them to be because uh, those things they're quite stuck down. They're smooth. They're fast. I enjoyed them immensely. So a little bit of stuff I'm, there about what we did in Oxford last week. Good, good. But that is fairly unusual for you to introduce a new class, isn't it? Have that's two a, that's the one... second. That's the second dig you've had. It's not a dig. It's not a yes, dig. It is. I'm a great believer in traditions. I mean, I'm, you know, but that's I'm just I'm I'm adding colour to the discussion by emphasising that you know it's not just every week you go, hey, there's a new class. Let's all buy new cars. You guys, you know, you 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 don't add new classes on a whim. No, I'm I'm still not comfortable with your attitude. Um, <laughs> no, this is very true. We don't. We, I mean. For us to be running the sideways GT3s, how long have they been out? Probably two, three years, and we've finally got oh, around to run. more, th- more than that, surely. You know, really? Well, well, you well, know, well, Ninka when did you establish in nineteen ninety three? When did you start? <laughs> when did you start your hurricane white kit? <laughs> Uh, this is outrageous. We still Actually, had we still we still had a queen, for example. Yeah, I have completed one. One of them is up and running. Uh, okay, I, I, I want I want the listeners <laughs> to imagine a, a graph. I, <laughs> I want the listeners to imagine a screen graphic. So on one axis, there's a little bar that says "Sideways White Kits that Pedro has finished one." <laughs> <laughs> And next to it, there's a little bar which is going to grow animation style, going bing, 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 bing. <laughs> um, how many white kits he's got. So one completed. How many have you got? But you you didn't think I was serious when I said, <laughs> how many white kits did I buy last week? Sorry, I'm going to have to press you for an answer. I did buy another one last week. 
Well, I found a set of decals, so it was the honourable thing to do. You can't have Obviously. decals just sitting around not being put on things. So, so, so uh, a seven pound fifty set of decals justifies a fifty quid car. Mm, I think they might have been more than that because they were slot fab decals, I believe. Uh, anyway, yeah. you're avoiding the question: How many yet I mean, to be built <laughs> white kits have you got? Oh, actual yet to be built. Yes, one as opposed to the. I have a plethora no. as WIP. I've got two M6s, oh, three Huracans, no. the Bentley Continental, uh, a, a McLaren 720. This is uh, sounding like a, a Lexus Christmas RCF, song. RCF and Aston Martin. Uh, it's, it's like the generation game. The, the On the first went, day of Christmas, my true love to me. The Alexa, things went past the conveyor belt. Awesome. Yeah. But only this um, morning, only this morning, I got up early and I went out and I sprayed a bit of black on the Aston. <laughs> and that's not a euphemism. Have you got, uh, well, you're talking about spraying uh, and just to level up, to open up the opportunity for abuse the other way around. Shall I talk about how well it's going building my oil drip man? Yeah. Because that must have a lot of pieces to it, and there must be a lot of priming and various different colours. Priming, use. priming, you do priming. Um, I probably should do priming. Um, well, dear listener, I got an oil drip man kit from uh, Magnetic Racing, and I was very excited about it. And I thought, oh, I'll go and buy some new rattle cans of paint to do that. Then I found out how much rattle cans of paint now are, because I haven't bought one of those for about 30 years. So I thought, sod that for a game of soldiers. I'm sure I've got some somewhere. Sure enough, I found a cardboard box full of tins of aerosol modelling paint, which really for radio, um, radio controlled shells. But anyway, any ah, storm. You did radio control? Well, yes. And, um, <coughs> excuse me. So there was there was some cans, and some were completely empty. None had actually been used for 10, 15 years. So I started kind of finding the right colours, and of course they were a bit spluttery, and I thought, oh, it's going to run out of gas, it's going to run out of gas. I have to do it all now. And so without rubbing any of the wood down, without priming anything, I over-sprayed, and of course it's all gone bubbly and lumpy, and I have to rub it down. And some of it, I don't think it's even dry. The yellow may not be dry even yet i think <laughs> what quite, well it was very tacky to the touch um so uh whilst it's only one kit that i've bought and one kit that i've started and one kit that i've yet to finish uh it's it is really a case of uh, one step forward and two steps back because i'm now going to have to sand it all down I probably will have to buy paint. But the reason it came to mind was you mentioned you'd slipped out early this morning and sprayed a bit of black. Um, have, you also got, have, you also, <laughs> have you also got white, blue, and yellow spray things? Because I could bring my oil drip <laughs> man up with me <laughs> and, um, you know, just add it, slide it onto the end of the desk <laughs> the beside, line. beside all of the white kits. But that means you wouldn't see it for another five years. Well, um, yeah, I'm not known for my speed on speed numbers of whistle. Whoa, what the hypocrisy when you are accusing me of being a little bit sluggish with my production. Exactly. I'm this is I've said it was an opportunity for you, you to did. slide me back. You did. So mm. yeah. This is why, and a serious point, Mimi, and I think the magnetic racing kits are great and you know, there's that great sort of expression of it if it's a hobby, be a hobbyist sort of thing. But what? what? I really, what? I, no, 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 no. Well, what? If there's a, I well, I like, and the, and the manufacturers know this, don't they? So, although buying a completely built thing, car, building, bits of scenery, whatever, is more expensive and possibly limiting because there's not as wide a choice. I reckon for most people, that's what they'd rather do than have a kit and paint it and glue it and build it because we don't have the time and the skills and the oh, inclination. Yeah. We'd, we'd rather have it finished. And I kind of fall into that category. So although I you know, willingly and enthusiastically bought the oil man kit, I probably should have said to them, you know, have another 10 guineas and paint it for me. or whatever. <laughs> Guineas. <laughs> Bless your heart. You Waitrose shoppers are all the same, aren't you? <laughs> 
You said anyway. something at the beginning that I tried to pick you up on. You said something like there is a well-known phrase or saying, if you're going to have a hobby, be a hobbyist or something like that. And I have never heard that before. And I think you're making it up and I'm calling you out uh, on it. No, um, it's not. It's not. Not. I, I am quoting from someone well, Churchill. Else. Churchill never said that. Church, yeah, Churchill will fight them on the beaches, <laughs> and if you're going to be a hobbyist, yeah. Uh, no, and I, I get. I think it's. Uh, I'll be. I think it's Dave Kennedy actually, but I may be wrong. So apologies <laughs> oh, if it's somebody else. But I think no, and I think it's a valid point that you buy these car. You know, well, is it a valid point? You buy a slot car. You take it out of the box and it might not work uh, straight away. You've got to do things to it. Um, so is that right or wrong? I don't know. And this is, again, I think the debate, you know, Carrera, um, SCX, Skeletric, pretty much. You buy a car, take it out of the box, and it'll work fine. Um, I don't see why a, a polycar, a slaughter, a sideways, a blah, 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 all these other things shouldn't be roughly the same. Uh, no, but that's other people disagree because they want to change everything. Um, it's the broad church of slot. Um, but I'm very much take my and I'm uh, dear listener. I am presently holding and could be accused of stroking my recently acquired Fly Nine Three Four in Elf livery from Le Mans. Uh, and just for the white. dear listener, just so you're aware, um, he is holding it, but he is only just now held it actually mm. up to the camera. Before, all I could see was the roof line because okay. he didn't know where his camera was properly. Well, uh, now I've got full. Uh, now you do. Now <laughs> most of the po- now the most part is blocked and you can't <laughs> see my face, so it's a death trip. Anyway, um, it's a lovely thing, and I, I speculated before uh, it had arrived that I was hoping uh, that it would be one of the Fly 934s that just the wheels went round when you brought it out of the box because it's not always guaranteed, um, and pretty much it is. The rear, the rear wheels and the mesh and everything is good. The front wheels just ever so slightly rub on the chassis. Uh, so appalled as I am, I may have to do some chassis shaving. Uh, chassis shaving. Chassis shaving. Um, and I don't. I suppose I, this is what I'm going to be a hypocrite. Say I don't mind. I would rather I just took the car out of the box and it ran. You know how difficult should that be? Um, but I sort of accept that with fly, you sometimes you've just got to just give a little bit of clearance or something. But um, anyway, um, I slightly digress because I'm sort of looking at my new Porsche and it's very lovely. Um, you've gone all I think all wispy eyed and um, I've you're... gone all middle aged man jet lagged. Mm-hmm. That's um, I I am for the I am for the camp which says you should be able to buy a car, take it out of the box, and run it. Yes, you might want to do things to make it faster, but you should still just take it out of the box and run it. But that what's fly. your point? Are, are you saying that fly won't run? That fly will run because the magnet will just push it through. The the front oh, the you, rubbing I mean, on the, the one, chassis the one, won't. Uh, yeah, the one thing I obviously the one thing I do as a matter of course is take the magnet out. Mm. Uh, you but... are just so close to being a tuner, aren't you? I, I want to congratulate you because you fought it hard. I can see the sweat on your brow. You've tried not to mention tyres this whole podcast, but you've been itching to, haven't you? You've been itching to mention tyres. Have I get? Have I not? Which do I, you'll have to help me. Why am I itching? Careful how you answer that. <laughs> <laughs> because you're on a slippery slope to tunerdom, and you are becoming a tuner of cars, which you. Poo poo. No, talk- I, I'm, go- I'm going oh, to. I'm still going to resisting. resist. Yeah, I'm going to resist. still resisting. I think what I do with tires is my is own business. Kind of, <laughs> <laughs> is rest- effectively use them to get stuff that's not running properly, running properly. So the tires are rock hard or they've melted or whatever. But uh, I'd take it at next stage. It's almost like balance of performance. What do I mean? So when I bought the NSR tires for the Carrera Porsche, and I tried them on the Skeletrix Porsche, and I found that it fitted both. And suddenly, those cars are kind of on parity. So the tyres are clearly the dominant thing. So it means that rather than making allowances for Carrera being a bit heavier and the gear being, gearing being a bit taller, yada, 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 fit those tyres, and my GT3 cars are all the same. And they're not far off a sideways car. So... Um, it's kind of like balance of performance, but mm. the real route into it is the tires have 
the standard tyres have lost so much grip that they need to be replaced. I'd rather, as I mentioned before, I'd rather be like my old Ninkos and SCX. The tyres last forever. Great. But as it is, you have to tune things. Change the tyres. It's not tuning. It's not tuning. It's tuning. (laughs) Scott. Scott. Yes. We've been wittering on for 54 and a half minutes. I think okay. these I think these people need a reprieve. Well, given that we're two old men, that's not bad that we can do that without a break. To be honest, <laughs> a comfort break, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Younger listeners, ask your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is the episode that wasn't meant to happen because I wasn't around to do it, and here I am, having been up for. 46 hours or whatever it is now, um, whittering on. So if it doesn't make any sense, blame jet lag. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, just God knows why, but thank tell you. Your tell, you, tell your friends. Tell your friends, particularly if they're in a country where we've not got a listener yet, <laughs> which is a, dimin- a diminishing number. A it diminishing is. number. Is. is there anything you would like to round up by looking ahead to? What's the next? Um, what's episode twenty? Oh, oh! Next one is episode twenty-seven. Ah, the tricky twenty-seventh oh. episode, as they 20, say in the podcast the, world. The difficult twenty-seventh episode. Um, what does the number twenty-seven mean to you in a <gasps> racing sense? Could it be something to do with the um, slot at uh, Formula One car we were talking about earlier? Well, he no. said cryptically. The, yeah, I think there's a, a natural that if. If the number 27 means Gilles Villeneuve, or does it mean Alan Jones in a Williams? Or does it mean Leclerc ripping off someone's helmet design? You'll have to fill me in on that one. I've not, I don't know what that's about. Is that modern Formula One? Yeah. All right, okay. Yeah. Well, don't, no, whatever. No harm done. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe the next episode will be about numbers. Then again, it <laughs> Might not. Oh my God! We want to try and entice people to listen, not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's talking about numbers, right? Anyway, uh, thank you for listening. It's probably uh, we don't know when we're going to publish because we're recording it when we usually publish it. So, it's all sorts of magic has to go on in the background, and uh, we know how slow Pedro is at doing magic. So, uh, <laughs> it's probably going to be Sunday. But anyway, uh, thanks for listening. Happy slotting, and we'll see you again soon. Goodbye.